Number 1. I'm a Marine stationed at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I live in the infantry barracks off of River Road. I recently had a rather strange encounter with a pair of black-eyed kids. I live on the third floor of the barracks that have open walkways on the outside and the rooms on the inside. This happened on a weekend back in November 2009. It was a weekend, so almost every Marine was out, either home, drinking, or sleeping. Only a handful were left in the barracks awake. I stayed in that weekend because I was broke and had no money to go out. I was watching a movie when I heard a knock at my door. Figuring it was my roommate who'd lost his key again, I went and opened it. Instead of a drunken roommate, I found two little kids standing on the walkway. Only these kids freaked the hell out of me. I don't know what it was about them, but as a marine, you're always told to listen to that little voice in your head, because it might just save your life from an IED. Right then, that voice was screaming at me to shut the door and lock it. There was also the fact that these kids had absolutely pitch black eyes. I mean, no white or any other colour to them whatsoever, just black. But I pushed those things aside and asked them what they were doing there so late. They responded by saying that it was really cold out and they wanted to come in and read. I was confused as how, because I've never met a kid that wants to read. Also, there was no mention of any parents or anything else you'd expect a lost couple of kids to say. I couldn't take my eyes off their pitch black eyes. It was like they were sucking me in. I felt horrible and was suddenly frightened for my life, like I needed to immediately take cover. They just stared at me with those goddamn eyes. I took a quick look up and down the walkway to see if any other marines were out, but there was nobody in sight. I turned back to the kids, who I noticed had taken a step forward toward me. I got the feeling like I was being hunted, like these kids were predators and out for their next meal or something. Instinct gave way to reason, and I decided to listen to that voice and shut the door and locked it. I heard soft, constant knocking for the next five minutes before I heard my window rattle, and then nothing. I went down to the officer on duty the next morning and asked him about it, and he said he hadn't seen or heard of any kids in the area at all, and dismissed it saying that I'd probably had too much to drink last night. Only I hadn't been drinking at all, or anything like that that night. I don't know what or who those kids were, but I doubt any of the families here would let their kids wander around at night on a military base. Number 2 A bit of background information first. This takes place when I was very young, probably 8 or 9 years old. At the time, I had been living in a house that had been in my family for generations. It wasn't full on haunted, but there had been a few times I'd seen things like doors opening and closing or shadowy figures wandering around. There was never anything that seemed dangerous, and usually it felt like whatever it was was just going about its business, or even checking on me. I sometimes saw it open my door and look in on me at night, or I could hear my family downstairs talking, so I know it wasn't one of them. I don't know if this was the same thing I saw in this story or not. The main point is, I was used to this sort of stuff, and not afraid of it. Waking up late at night wasn't unusual for me, so I didn't think it was strange when I woke up probably about 3 in the morning one night. I started to go back to sleep, then I felt something on my legs. We didn't have any pets, aside from my goldfish, but the first thought in my 8-year-old mind was that for some reason my mum had bought a dog and it was curled upon my bed, holding down my legs. But the more I thought about it, the more I realised that it wasn't that kind of feeling it felt like someone was sitting on the bed, sitting on my legs, because I was lying close to the edge. I thought maybe my mum was in the room for some reason, so I picked up over the blankets. I couldn't see the face or anything, but my door, which was usually closed at night, had been left open, and a short, but clearly adult figure sat on my bed. It was dark, so I don't know if it had facial features or if it was just a shadow, but I could see a dark outline. It seemed to be looking at me, but I didn't feel threatened, more like it was watching over me or something. After a few moments of looking at the figure, I just fell back asleep. In the morning, 
My mother told me that my grandmother had passed away the previous night. Number 3 In 2005, my now ex and I were looking for a house to rent. We lived in Macclesfield, England, a small town in the northwest of the country. We eventually found an old Victorian terraced house, a little more than our budget, but loved it upon viewing. A few weeks after moving in, strange anomalies started happening and there was always a sense of another presence. Not a bad one, more of someone mischievous. Both my ex and I saw what appeared to be a youngish girl in our peripheral vision. At first I thought it was my ex peeking round the door at me as I sat on my bed. I could see she was clearly a girl with long hair, so naturally I spoke and said something along the lines of, what are you doing? Thinking she was just being a creep, but was not there when I looked up. I shouted her name, but she was downstairs in the living room. Her experience of the apparition was of a smallish figure moving across the landing where I had seen her also. A few more strange occurrences happened, but it never felt menacing, or I never felt scared. I have lived or stayed in houses, coincidentally on the same street, that have had bad vibes to them and have felt unsettled. As I mentioned before, it felt more like a young person just being mischievous, opening doors, moving our belongings about, that kind of thing. Things became a little more active one night, when I had my younger brother staying over. In the spare room was a bunk type bed, but instead of a bed underneath there was a desk and storage space which my brother slept in. He didn't know of anything that was going on in the house. The following morning, he told me that his bed started shaking rather vigorously, even when he switched the light on. He got out, checked the bed, got back in, and it started again when he was trying to get back to sleep. He was a little freaked out. The icing on the cake came when after a two week vacation we took to America, literally half an hour after returning home, not even unpacked our suitcases, there was a knock on our front door. We were a little taken aback to see a policeman. Inviting him in, he told us that a few of our neighbours adjacent to our house rang a few days ago, reporting a young girl screaming for help out of our bedroom window. We explained that we had been away for the past two weeks and hadn't been here. He could clearly see our suitcases and also said he did see a pile of unopened mail on the floor while looking through the mailbox when he called to the property a few days prior, so knew the house had been unoccupied for a while. I did ask which neighbours called in, but he wouldn't tell me for obvious reasons. I wasn't mad at them, just curious and wanted to ask details on what they actually saw. We had to move out the house later that year, due to the landlord wanting to sell and couldn't afford the price he was asking. I still look at the window every time I pass, hoping to see her. Number 4 Let me start by saying I don't scare easily. I have had several paranormal experiences over the years and not been freaked out by them. In fact, the house I live in now has a ghost. I nicknamed it Emily. She is mostly mischievous, she takes things or moves stuff, but if you question her reality, she throws things at you. However, she isn't what my story's about. I'm just mentioning her as an example that the supernatural doesn't bother me, but one paranormal experience I had bothered me a lot. My dad was in the Navy, and when I was 16, we lived in Rota, Spain. We had finally been able to move on base, and I was thrilled. But things weren't right in that unit. We came home from a trip to find a window that had been sealed shut was wide open, but nothing in the house was disturbed. Then, I started having horrific nightmares. Not just scary, but blasphemous too. I am a lifelong Christian, and these dreams bothered me a lot. Then, one night as I was laying in bed thinking about school and such, I heard deep breathing coming from my doorway. I always have trouble getting to sleep, so I know I was still awake. I'm basically logical, so I think it's my dad snoring in the next room. He has a snore that can be heard all over the house, but no, I can hear him and the breathing. Then I think it's my dog. She is a Boston Terrier and can match my dad in snore loudness, but no. I can hear her, my dad, and the breathing. Next, 
I start with outside noises and house noises and anything else natural. But no, I can hear all the normal sounds and the breathing, which is now moving towards my bed. Now a deep terror takes hold of me as I can feel an evil presence, but can't see it. I feel like I can't breathe, I can't move, I can't even think. When the deep breathing, evil presence is right over me, drowning out all of the sound and crushing me, I manage one small, desperate thought. God help. And instantly, the breathing is gone, the presence is gone, and I can move and breathe again. So, I do what any other rational person does. I start trying to figure out what it really was. I mean, no way did a demon just walk in my room, right? But all the usual sounds are there, and none of them sound like deep breathing. Finally, I have to admit that what had happened was real. Maybe that's why Emily doesn't scare me. After you've had a demon breathing on you, nothing else is scary. Number 5. The most terrifying event to happen in my life yet happened just 10 years ago, sometime in June 2005 when I was 13. I guess it was one of everyone's worst nightmares. Someone or something living with you unnoticed in your own home. The place I lived in, in suburban Maryland, was a condo, and if you turned a corner in the living room, you could see a small hallway. At the end of this was my bedroom door, and to the side, my bathroom. One late evening, right before summer break, I was watching a movie in the living room with my parents. I recalled that I needed to get something from my bathroom, so I left for a second. The only light on in my house was the one in my room, on my desk. As I passed my room, I realised the door was open and the light was on, but what really intrigued me was that I caught movement out of the corner of my eye. I approached the door to get a closer look, thinking it was some animal in my room. It was a million times worse. Sitting on my desk, going through my camera case, was this creature. It didn't seem to be looking for anything, but it was pulling things out forcefully and throwing them on the floor. The thing was about the size of a two-year-old, hunched over, hairless, bald, and wrinkled. Its skin was pitch black, like it was burned, and was very thin. I could see how bony it was. It appeared to be shaped like a person, and looked like a small human mummy, until it turned around. I gasped, and turned to the bathroom, but peered back in to get a brief look because I was feeling bold. It had turned its head to face me, and I could make out long, teardrop-shaped eyes, like the one little green men have in cartoons, pitch black. I chickened out and fled into the bathroom, trying to act natural, like I hadn't seen it, so it wouldn't come and try and get a closer look at me. I flipped the light switch on in the bathroom and locked the door. I remember sitting on the floor on the other side of the room, feeling stranded, I did not want to go past my room again, so I resorted to calling my mum over. I asked my mum to promise that she would do what I asked, no matter how weird it was. I asked her to go into my room, look around, put my camera case on my bed, and report to me. She was gone for five whole minutes, then she slowly walked to the bathroom. Have you been keeping birds in your room? she asked. I said no. Well. For a week or so, there's been a weird smell in your room. I didn't say anything about it, though. The past week, I'd been on a trip to Chicago with some friends. My mum continued. Well, when I walked in, your camera case was on the ground, and I saw something moving the curtains. Something big. But I didn't see it well. It's gone now. It flew out the window. It was probably a bird that got in. I thanked my mum and went to bed early. I knew it couldn't have been a bird, because birds can't open zippers like the one I found open on the camera case. I've never seen it again, but I remember that one night two weeks later, I heard some strange noises and felt something moving on my legs while I was going to sleep, and the window was open when I got up. Another day, I heard a loud thump coming from my room when I was watching TV, and when I came in, 
a book from my bookshelf lay in the middle of the room. I also found an assortment of string and bouncy balls and doodads in a corner of the laundry room, and no one in my family had done it. I still wonder what I saw, and whether anyone else has had an encounter with it. None of my friends have, and I would really like anyone who has seen it to know this. You are not alone. Hi guys, Brimstone here. Hope you all had a very happy Christmas and a fantastic New Year. I know I did, because it was my birthday New Year's Day, and I wasn't hungover. Fantastic times. Coming into the New Year, I want to make this channel a lot more regular, as opposed to how it's been recently. Starting from today, videos will be uploaded three times a week. They will be on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. It will be a combination of the true encounters, like I've done on this one, um, both for paranormal and for encounters with living. Also, want to do a couple more classic stories, finishing off Herbert West, and also viewer submissions for both longer personal encounters and creepy pastors. So, if you guys have anything that you want to submit to me, just feel free to email me. The email is in the description box below. Also, you can catch me on Twitter and Facebook using the relevant links. We are ever so close to 20,000 subscribers now which means that that Q&A video will be coming very, very soon. So please keep sending your questions in. I'm going to pick a load of them and just try and get as many done as possible. So, until next time, sleep tight. <laughs>